Hello, my friends. Today, we're looking at Native Instruments Contact. It's the most powerful sampler in the world and something which I bet a lot of you have got and don't completely understand. What I'm going to be explaining to you in the next 20 minutes is how it works, how the interface works, how you load instruments, how you set up multiple instruments inside the same instance of contact, both in Logic and in Cubase, how you set up multiple outputs so they all go out to separate places, all that good stuff, plus some special stuff about how to massively reduce the amount of memory it uses and stuff like that. All that is coming up in the next 20 minutes, so we better get going. Right, let's get going. So when you first open up um, uh, Contact, you'll see something like this. Um, on the right-hand side is a big empty space where all your loaded instruments will go when you load them, and down the left-hand side are all your authorised uh, libraries. Now, the way you acquire your libraries is like this. Um, when you first buy a library, um, you uh, will get a serial number, you click there, you put the serial number in, add serial number, and it'll then come up in this list of um, not installed instruments. Um, now, as soon as you then click on something like that, uh, which is not installed, it starts automatically downloading. Most libraries will download through native access. Some um, need to be downloaded separately, like Spitfire stuff. Um, and Berlin, I think, um, the uh, orchestral tools, because they're so big, they have their own system for downloading. But this is how most libraries um, are downloading. You can see it's downloading there. And as soon as it's downloaded, it will crop up here in this list of licensed libraries. This is the big difference between the um, full version and the um, and the contact player, the free version of contact, other than 359 quid or whatever it is. Um, the free version will only play back licensed libraries. That means these developers have paid a fee to native instruments to use their contact player and their native access um, authorization and download system. If you have the full version of contact, um, you've got the ability to edit much more and also you can load third-party libraries which don't go through the native access system. And we'll look at that in a moment. Let's first of all just look very simply at how you load an instrument. You Look at this. It's, uh, here's, uh, for example, Spitfire Symphonic Strings. Underneath it says Instruments. You click on that. You find the instrument you want, Violins 1, and you double click. And it loads it here on the right hand side. You might choose a different instrument. Let's add another one in. Uh, we will have something from Berlin Brass. We'll have that French horn. We'll load that. And up it pops on the right hand side as soon as it's loaded. OK. Right, let's just click on the Files menu now. And this just gives you a normal file browser. If you want to load an instrument which is not uh, a licensed con you know, contact player in instrument, this is how you do it. On this panel here, you navigate to where the sample may live. So if we go on this drive, for example, there's a, here we go, the Red Room's uh, Traveller series. We find Celtic Fiddle. We open the thing. You navigate down until you find the Instruments folder. When you click on the Instruments folder, in this panel underneath, up will come your instrument. And then, from there on, you just double-click or drag it off um, to the right, and it will load. And there, lo and behold, it is. So, and after that, it behaves in exactly the same way as a licensed library. Um, so, that's all you have to do. Now, let's have a look in detail at what's going on on the right here, because there's a lot of important controls which you need to know. Across the top, um, let's just look at these first of all. This is a um, new instrument if you're going to create your own instrument. Um, you can save this, these instruments off if you've, made some, if you've altered them in some way and you want to save the edit. Or you, if you like, if you've loaded up half a dozen instruments and they're all aligned, to, uh, assigned to different um, um, MIDI channels and things like that, you can save them off as a multi. And if you save them off as a multi, you get a number of options, patch only, which means just saving the details of what's in the that particular contact instrument, um, patch plus all the samples, so it's quite a big save, or a thing called a monolith, which is uh, where you just get a single file which has all the um, samples and um, contact patch and everything in them. Um, just back to this top bar again. Um, this is settings. You probably won't need to get into that. Um, this is an important one. If you click on this, it allows you to open and close a whole load of different uh, windows within Contact. Um, so there's the master, which is uh, gives you master tuning, master volume, and master tempo. 
uh, should you so wish it. I don't normally have that one turned on. Um, there's um, the keyboard, which I think is quite the, the keyboard, which is useful because it shows you both the range of the instruments and it also shows you uh, where relevant, where uh, you see here you get some different coloured ones. It shows you where the key switches are. So it shows you how the whole instrument's laid out. It's, so it's really useful. And outputs. And we'll come on and look at outputs in a bit because it's, uh, it's the bit which a lot of people find uh, more confusing. Um, so that's, that's the layout of um, the, the overall thing. Let's look in detail at actually how a, a single instrument is laid out. This top half of the instrument is always the same and the bottom half, the bit I'm flashing on and off there, is the user interface de designed by the sample um, developer. So you see the uh, orchestral tool one is completely different to, the, um, to the, the Spitfire one. Now having a look however at the top bit, uh, this is important, this says this is the MIDI channel which this particular instrument responds to. Okay, So, for example, I have a choice of 1 to 16. In the, in the plug-in version of Contact, you don't have access to ports B, C, and D, so you're just using these 16 channels. So you can load up to 16 instruments into one instance of the plug-in version of Contact. Um, this is the output. Um, I'll come on and talk about that in a bit. Um, this is important. This tells you how much memory this particular instrument is using. So it's 339... 393 megabytes and there's another memory thing up here which shows you how much all the instruments in this particular instance of contact are using which is just over a gigabyte then you have uh, the purge button which we'll talk about in a minute solo mute pan left and right volume and this volume knob here uh, responds to cc7 look look mum no hands so as i slide up a I, as i move a fader which is adjusted to cc7 it will change the volume of that this might differ depending on your door. Um, the VU meter is there. It's useful because you can then see which instrument is playing back. This is the tune knob, obviously. Um, it goes up in increments of uh, a semitone um, unless you hold down the shift button, at which point you can then do fine tuning of that particular instrument. Everything else downstream of that is um, provided by the developer, and so it's not going to be the same on each one. So those are the main things you need to know. If <coughs> Um, if you load, so you can use um, you can use contact in a couple of different ways. Uh, you can choose to have one instrument per instance of contact and just have lots and lots of instances of contact. Then you get end up with a really big template. Also, that can use a lot more memory, and I'll, sh I'll show you why. For, su suppose you've got an instrument like this. And you don't want to load individual articulation, but you want this just to be string longs. So you want to use, say, the longs there, the, the sordinos there. If you wanted another instance coming out on a different MIDI channel, you might load in violins one again and then just use the shorts. Now, if you load two inst the same two instances, even with all these um, different articulations in, into the same instance of contact, it only uses one lot of memory. So it doesn't use two lots of 393 megabytes. If you look up here, you can just about see it only uses one lot. So it's a more memory efficient way of organizing your samples if you're going to be using this, if it if more than one instrument draws on the same sample pool. Okay. I also find it easier just to have a multi with, for example, short spiccato, staccato, all the shorts in, in, in one instance. Because a lot of the time you want them just coming out of one um, um, output and I'll talk about multi outputs in a minute. Um, let's just look at how you might let's if we load in uh, for, your, for example a couple more instruments we'll put violas in, uh, we'll put uh, oh, the celli in and some basses in. Okay now if you want to make that more compact so you can see it you just click this little button up here and they all go small. Now what it does by default is it'll go um, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. So it'll put It'll incrementally, so that's channels one to five. How do you access that? That depends slightly on your door. Um, in Cubase, the way you do it is if you select this and then go add track, it will uh, automatically assign the MIDI channels to that instrument. So we're going to call this K6, and we're going to add, I don't know, six instruments. And now, if you look at the VU meters as I play this one, violin one. 
that's violin two with the pits. There's the violas. There's the celli. And there's the basses. Okay. Um, so that's that's pretty much how it works. Um, in Logic, it works slightly differently, and I'll show you that now. Here in good old Logic, you will see as you go to open it, you have a, a different choice to the people in Cubase. In Cubase, you just get one version of Contact 6. In uh, Logic, you get a choice of all these um, different output configurations. If you're going to be using multiple outputs, then it's well worth uh, choosing the 16 output stereo, uh, 16 output version, because that will do you very well. Um, again, you uh, open it in exactly the same way. Um, but when you come to allocate um, outputs that and multiple different types, uh, different instruments, this does work differently. So, if, okay, let's load up the same instruments again. Violin one, violin two, viola, cellos, and basses. Okay. Now, again, they're all uh, exactly as in the Cubase version. They're allocated to separate MIDI channels. Now, um, what you do with this, however, if you go back into um, Logic, open up the mixer, okay, you see this little button here, that's where you add aux channels, and auxes is probably the best way of doing this. There's, in, in Logic there are a whole load of different ways of doing it, but auxes for medium and small templates is probably the best. Once you add the auxes, select them all, control click, create track and now the auxes come up as uh, as tracks here so if we go back to contact up the top there our instrument open it up let's see what happens so we play one the instrument itself there's violin one go to aux one which we're going is violin two aux two which is uh, viola aux three cello and aux four which is bass okay okay let's now get to get to grips with the thing which baffles quite a lot of people which is how you deal with the multi outputs um the best way so first of all we need our output pane open so we click on that and open the output pane and you see it opens up down the bottom here so you'll get a few default outputs and things like that the way to do the easiest way of assigning each of these instruments to a separate output is you click on this presets and batch configuration and up will come a whole load of really useful options. One of these batch functions says, there you go, clear output selection and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. If that's what you want, you click on that, bing, bing and look, violin, violin one, viola, cello, all coming on separate outputs. Now, how do you get them to come up in contact? I mean, how do you come in your door? That is specific to each person's door. In Cubase, the way you do it is this. You go to the instrument. Do you say this little activate outputs here? You click on that. And then you, as you add these, as you click on these, these will come up in your mixer. So if we just move that out of the way for a second and open up the mixer bit at the bottom, you see suddenly you've got the individual outputs coming up down there. So. There, you see, look, there's pits coming out on that one. There's the viola coming out on that one. And there's the cello coming out on that one. Um, so that's probably the easiest way of assigning um, separate outputs. If you don't want to do that, say you just want two channels. So we click on this little bu plus button here. Uh, let's have eight, I don't know. Um, and uh, delete existing, yes. Uh, and OK, and there they are. So it's created out eight separate outputs. Now, if you want to manually set them, you go into the instrument, and there it's you can set them to here we go stereo one. So you might want both of you might want one to stereo one, and for example shorts to stereo two. And so, f just for the sake of argument, we want those to go to stereo one. We want these to go to stereo. So you can assign the outputs like like that and they will come out of the correct output. Um, if you want to label the outputs, you just double click on them and go, hello, or whatever. Um, the default output setting, 
you can set up eight outputs like this, call them whatever you like, and then um, you can save them as a preset. That's quite a cool thing to do. Um, if you need to, and you can save it as a default, which means that every time you open a new instance of contact, all your outputs labeled one to eight or whatever will come up. Um, so that's how you do multi outputs in Cubase. This is how you do it in Logic. Now, if you want them to address separate outputs, go here, batch functions, uh, clearing a clear output and create one individual channel for each uh, instrument loaded, and then up they'll all come. You go into here and you make sure that each one is allocated to a separate output and then once again as you go through this this time we'll get the uh, mixer up actually they're all coming up under separate separate aux channels and then you can route the ch then you can route them as you want wherever you like Okay, so it's different. Uh, it's, it works slightly differently. You also have um, you have fewer outputs on the um, audio units version to the um, uh, VST version. So Cubase and um, the um, the plugin which works in Cubase and the plugin which works in uh, Logic do function slightly differently. So we've done how you set up multi outputs, multi instruments in Cubase and Logic. A couple of really important things. Um, so this whole setup here is using currently 1.35 gigs of RAM. Now, do you see this purge button here? If you're running these samples off an SSD, um, which is uh, the best way of doing it, um, the SSD is fast enough that it doesn't actually have to load any of the sample at all into the memory of your computer. So what you can do is you can what's called purge um, the um, all samples. So if we click that, suddenly you see um, the memory there has gone down to zero. As soon as you play that instrument, oh, let's go back. It loads it so fast you can't hear it. So it's only using ten megabytes of RAM. If you want to purge all the samples of all, here we go. If you want to purge all the samples in all the instruments you've got loaded, you go to the menu button there and you go, where is it, where is it? Global purge, uh, purge all samples. Jing! And look, if you, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there it, you've now down to zero memory. Now, not all samples play back uh, properly when you purge them, and some legato samples can be a bit uh, difficult, but the vast majority of them do. So if you're working with limited amount of RAM, but you've got a fast SSD, um, this is a tremendous way of saving an enormous amount of uh, memory. So if you're, for example, working on a MacBook where memory is extremely expensive, buy yourself uh, you know, a one terabyte SSD, plug it into the side of your, put your samples on that, and it effectively acts like extra memory. So you can purge the samples all the time and run a much bigger template with hardly any memory being used. So it's a really cool way of doing it. Um, the other good thing to do, um, if you want to get your samples loading fast, um, is a thing called batch resaving. It does take a while, um, but you go here, you choose your library, and it comes up with lots of this um, warnings. And you should take these seriously because what it does is it sort of resaves all the library just so it's complete, it's all optimized and it'll just load really, really, really quickly. You make sure make make sure you're not batch resaving your only copy of the library, if at all possible. Um, you can always re-download it later, but uh, if anything goes wrong, it can screw it up. But it shouldn't do, and it and it does massively speed up the load time. So here we go. We go, you have to navigate um through your uh, drive to find where you put the library. So for example, if we go into Berlin Brass and we choose, uh, I don't know, horns or whatever, go OK, and now it goes through resaving all the patches. Now you can see this would, if you've got a big loads and loads of libraries, this is going to take a while. But once you've batch resaved, it just goes whoosh! 
like a speeding bullet back into your computer. Um, so it is definitely um, something worth doing. So I think that's pretty much all there is to be said for, uh, for this for the time being. Um, the full version of Contact is well worth it if you're doing this seriously because although you're paying almost 400 quid for it, um, you get access to the, the instruments which come with it from Contact are not bad and some of them are very, very useful. Um, some of them are really good. It also gives you access to an enormous number of free and low-cost libraries. So it's more like buying access to that rather than paying for the software, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I hope you found that useful and um, that you'll be able to uh, navigate your way through contact with a bit more confidence in future. If you've enjoyed this and found this useful, then please obviously do the business and subscribe to the channel and we'll bring you more useful, interesting and thrilling stuff in uh, the very near future. So that's all from me for today. Um, see you again very soon.